To begin using Island Secure Disaster Recovery with Veeam, you will first need to add Island as a service provider in your Veeam console. To do that, we will click on the Backup Infrastructure tab on the left hand side, and then click on the Service Providers icon on the top left section. Click the Add Service Provider button at the top or in the center of the screen to bring up the Service Provider wizard. You will receive the information to fill in this wizard from an Island Project Manager. First, we will need to add the DNS name of the Island Veeam Cloud Connect server. Keep in mind that you may have a different DNS name depending on the data center and location you're replicating to. You can add a description if you want, uh, I'll just leave this one here, and I'll make sure that we're set on port 6180. Check the box below to allow this Veeam backup and replication installation to be managed by a service provider. This allows Island to display more useful data from your Veeam instance within the Island console. And then I'll click Next to continue. Under the Credentials page, we should see the SSL certificate has been verified. And below that, we'll click on the Add button to enter in our credentials. Again, this info will be provided to you by your Island Project Manager. Once you've entered your credentials, we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then we'll click on Apply. Under the Hardware Plans page, we can see the resources reserved for you. We'll go ahead and click Next here again. If you're using the default network extension appliance, like I am here, you'll need to configure the actual appliance VM. If you're using your own firewall, you won't see this page and you can skip ahead. Uh, but for now, we'll go ahead and highlight the extension appliance and we'll click on Edit. And then you can change the host, the resource pool, and the data store to deploy the network appliance on. Uh, for me, the default here looks fine. And we'll want to make sure we attach the appliance to the correct network. During a full site failover, the network extension appliance on the island side will serve as your DR firewall and router. But during a partial failover, the network appliance on both sides will work together to create a layer 2 bridge. We'll go over that later. For now, we'll just need to make sure the network appliance is connected to the same network that my production servers are connected to. For instance, in my lab, my production servers are using the VM network, so I'll go ahead and choose that and then hit OK. Below, you can select the Use DHCP to auto-assign an IP address to the appliance, or you can statically set one. I'm going to go ahead and manually set an IP address that I know is available under my VM network. Then I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now, if you have multiple networks on your side that need to be protected, we can add more network extension appliances to this list, and we can configure in the same way we did this first one. Once we have the network extension appliance configured, we'll go ahead and click Apply and wait for the service provider to be added. During this time, the network appliances are deployed at both sites, and once complete, you can see the new VM in your vCenter environment. So everything looks good and the provider has been added, and checking in vSphere, I can now see the network extension appliance. This server will remain powered off on your side unless you perform a partial failover. And during that partial failover, the server will power on and act as a gateway from your other production servers to the failed over replicas at Island. Now back in Veeam, if I go under the backup infrastructure tab, I can take a look at the service providers, and we also have this new manage default gateways button. This allows you to configure the default gateway to be used by the Island network appliance during a failover. This should match your production default gateway. In my case, my VM network is a slash 16, so I'll put in the network mask as well as the default gateway, and you'll repeat this for any other networks you might have. Okay, so now that we have our service provider added, our network extension appliance deployed, and our gateways configured, we're ready to begin replication. In the next video, we'll walk through creating a replica job to the Island Cloud environment.